Hello and welcome to the second season of the Make It Epic Wedding Podcast. Matt, how are you, mate? G'day, Tim. How are you, mate? Good to <laughs> be back. It's been a little while. Uh, I feel like we were like, oh, we're going to have a little break and we're going to get straight back into it. Um, like, it is only the middle of January, but far out, I feel like it's been a bloody long oh, time mate. since we've been on here and had some fun. It has, <laughs> it has, but there has been so much that has been happening. It was so much. How was it? How was the Christmas, mate? How was the Christmas and the New Year's? Christmas was good. Um, and then, like, pretty much our Christmas day off, Boxing Day off, and then I shot pretty much every single day from then until pretty much now, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. today today was my first day. Like, it's like the 17th of January, and uh, it's probably today's my first day in the office this year, like a full day. Like, I've been in the office and stuff, but today's the first full day in the office not out shooting, doing something else, which was pretty uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, busy <laughs> man. a big man. couple of weeks. Been a yeah, early. yeah, hundred uh, percent. We we had our first wedding uh, back on the third of January. We we did that one together at Alpha Hall. That was pretty cool. Um, straight, yeah, you, straight into it, no rest. And then um, <laughs> you you had a pretty epic multi day wedding over over New Year's, which sounded pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty epic. I was. Uh, I don't think I've ever been so just like amazed at how much stuff happened in like a very short period of time like yes it was a couple of day wedding um but man we jam-packed some stuff into that bad boy <laughs> it was yeah. it was insane so the bride had a couple of like a couple of dresses and um we did prep and portraits for every single one of them so that was pretty crazy um yeah it was and just a, just as a bit of context the- like this is a this is a, a very much a cultural wedding Yes, absolutely. And it was like something I've never done before, complete, like to be completely honest. I've never really shot like, I've shot some cultural stuff before, but not like, uh, so this one was like a Hindu ceremony and then a Sri Lankan ceremony. Um, so it was pretty crazy. Like I never knew that you could have a three hour ceremony and like everyone still be attentive and listening to it at some point. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, down at Motor Farm. Um, wow, what a venue. That was damn epic to be there for a couple of days explore the whole place and uh, shoot some epic content. And I know I use the word epic a lot, but this was probably one of the coolest weddings I've shot in a long time. And I'm really excited to get uh, this content out to you all pretty soon. Yeah, amazing, man. I've seen a couple and yeah, just Loki, it is bloody amazing. It looks so good. Uh, Mona Farm is definitely on my bucket list. And, you know, like I've just booked a booked a wedding there for early 2024. So I'm super excited uh, to, to get onto there. Um, but, mate, look, it's been, a, it's been a crazy, crazy season. Obviously, we, we've had a bit of a break on the podcast. But, you know, it doesn't mean even though we haven't been recording, it doesn't mean there hasn't been anything, um, you know, in the plans. We've been working a couple, a couple of things behind the scenes. But, you know, like we've just like jumped straight in. Like as soon as that like clock ticked over to 2023, like my emails and inquiries just like skyrocketed. And I know yours is, yours is the same, probably more than mine, but like it's just been absolutely mental. Like as soon as it was like 2023, like engagement season, like boom, started. I felt like it was just, you know, guys were popping the question left, right and center. <laughs> It's crazy, isn't it, right? Like it's, and I think like, and I was like, we were talking before this and we're like, is it really people like getting engaged between Christmas and New Year's that are like actually slamming out inboxes? Or is it like people that have been engaged for a while and they're like, oh crap, I wanted to get married in 2023 and they're freaking yeah. out like low key that they haven't done anything or freaking out that it's only a year away till 2024, which, um, you know, like in the wedding world, like a year is probably not that big of a uh, time, I guess. And, you know, it does take time to plan these um Wedding yeah, so ex- especially given the like last, to. yeah, like especially given the last two years, like I think, you know, like your good vendors are really booking out year and a half, like in advance, which is, you know, like it's it, it's good for those that really put in the effort and really try and uh, make sure that they have like a very high standard um, for their client uh, experience. But look, oh, I've I've been to two expos in the last like two weeks which has been like pretty mental and like most of the couples that i'm talking to are you know like they've actually been engaged for a while so i think it was like it clocked over to 2023 and they're like oh damn like my wedding's coming up i need to get this sorted asap and like for me i'm i'm almost at capacity for 2023 like i'm 
pretty much booked out. Um, what about yourself? Like, what's what's twenty twenty three looking like in your bookings? Yeah, mate. I'm um, pretty much like if I didn't book anything else, I'd probably be okay with it, sort of thing. Um, I'm mm. still taking a couple here and there. There's a few like random dates, but pretty much like Saturdays have been gone for six months, <laughs> just about. Yeah. Um, and if you're a Friday or something like that, you've probably got more chance. And you know, your midweeker or Sundays are still around. But yeah, it's been um, it's been hectic. And yeah, I think there's like, and it's not just me and you, but like a lot of vendors are in the same position where like after last year being a monster year uh, you know we all are pretty like much at a point now where we're like we need to close our books at some point so we don't do what we did to ourselves last year and slam ourselves to the point of yeah. like you know uh exhaustion and kind of burnout and you know we all need to like i guess protect our businesses so to speak with that as well so there's definitely people that um you know vendors out there that are like when it comes to this engagement session they're being really picky about who and when they're going to be taking weddings um you know for next year especially this year like you know a lot of i know a lot of vendors are closing books already so which is crazy to think because we are literally in this like you know second third week of january and there's like multiple vendors that i know have closed their books for this year which is yeah epic. yeah which is yeah like which is super good for them like obviously means they're doing something right hey <laughs> Absolutely. So I guess this is just uh, something that pops in my head and, you know, I love a little random thought, uh, but, or, you know, questions. Matt's, Matt's random thoughts. Uh, Let me hear it. Yeah. <laughs> watch out. We're in trouble. But like maybe because we're talking about engagement season, engagement season is busy for like us vendors, but also for like a lot of couples, there's some hustling going on trying to find the right vendor, right? And if you mm. had your heart set on somebody and they're like, oh, sorry, I've closed my books in the whole year and like whatever, and you haven't planned your wedding yet, what would you do? Mm. So you get to this point, you're like, damn, I'm going to have to find the, you know, like a vendor, like most likely a couple. And then whoever says yes. And then, you know, depending on who it is, it could be, you know, it could be a price match. Um, but hopefully we've, we've given a few of you guys like a little bit of tips and insight to, you know, look past the price and look at the value, you know, um, but look, a lot of a lot of vendors are booked, and we, we've we've made it pretty clear. Like those that are really offering a lot of value, and those that I suppose that um, you know are well kind of liked within um, within the public domain, book out the earliest, and that's like that's just that. Absolutely, and like I was just trying to think then about uh, you know when I was like when you're talking about that, I was like, oh, this goes back to like our chats about like reverse booking and things like that. So if you haven't heard those podcasts or you know, you're freshly engaged, like definitely go back to some of our uh, more raw moments, I guess we've had on our podcast and some of those. Mate, everything, ones. everything is raw. Everything is raw <laughs> and loose on this podcast. <laughs> this is, this is, this is season two. We're professionals now. Um, <laughs> we got this, uh, but yeah, definitely go back and have a listen to some of those episodes where we've talked in the past about like, you know, reverse booking and things like that, which um, I think like in moments when we are like, look like people are looking busy already for 2023 and you know um and you want to lock in all those vendors and you want to lock in your venues still like it's an opportunity for you to try and line everybody up and get those vendors involved that you want there and really like make sure that your day is as amazing as possible yeah and like that's that's the thing right there there is so many vendors out there right and we understand like how overwhelming it can be um you know like we have we have been in that position it is crazy, like, and especially um, coming on to expos, like every couple that I speak to, it's just, you know, one of the questions I ask first is, how's the wedding planning going? And, you know, like nine out of 10 times, your answer is like, holy cow, this is so overwhelming, you know, and a bit of advice that we always give is like, look, just like relax. Like there's a couple of things that you can, you know, really focus on. Like, yes, there is a lot of vendors, but have a look at the things that you want, you know, the things that you don't want. And especially for your, you know, the vendors that you do book first, like your celebrants, your photographer, your videographer, um, you know, those that are adding like a, a bit of a, you know, a personal kind of touch like to your wedding, like make sure they just suit your vibe. Like that, that is it. Like make sure it suits your vibe. And yes, like we understand, like it's, it's crazy times. Inflation is ridiculous. You know, like the cost of living is rising. We un like we understand like there is a budget like to um, try and maintain. But I think if you really start to look at the value that people offer, like we're really not that. I wouldn't say we're overpriced. Like, I don't think I'm overpriced. I don't think you're overpriced. I think we're we're quite reasonable for the value that we do offer. Um, but obviously, there's a range. So 
just keep that in mind when you are having a look at, you know, different types of vendors that, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Absolutely. And I was, uh, while we were, to- while you were talking away then, Tim, and um, giving you a spiel. And- <laughs> while, I was, while I was having a spiel and talking some smack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were, get- you were getting really excited there. So I just put myself on mute and had a little bit of a session behind, you know, having a behind the scenes here just to find out, <laughs> uh, you know, what is what, what episode we were talking about, like, you know, all the goodness of, like, you know, when you reverse bookings and, like, you know, what to do when you're engaged or freshly engaged. And then I realized that we named that uh, <laughs> that episode Freshly Engaged, Now What? Uh, so if you haven't seen that episode, it is episode number seven. So go back, have a listen. Um, you know, because I think that's it was an early, oh, it was like a mid-range, you know, mid, mid-season, yeah. I like to call that. Uh, so we probably were, like, starting to feel a bit more confidence, which means we're probably making more mistakes, um, which is good. Uh, but, yeah, definitely have a listen. Um, hopefully there's some golden nuggets there for you guys to uh, listen to and be helpful in this time when it is hectic out there in the wedding world. And uh, it can be overwhelming, but it also should be enjoyable. And I want to just, like, remind you all that, you know, like, yes, this engagement season is crazy and, like, you know, you're trying to lock in all your vendors and that whole process is nuts. But try and enjoy being engaged because you're only engaged for a short period of time. And, like, at the end of it, at the end of the day, like, it's probably the most enjoyable time I feel like I had with, like, Jess. Um, You know, not that it's not (laughs) Planning your wedding was the most enjoyable time. Did you just say that? (laughs) Oh, no, like, I take that part back. But I I take the, like, you know, like, the no, like, like, no stress of, like, married life and houses and all that sort of stuff potentially for some people uh it's a good time then you know because you can go out you don't feel like you need to like save all your money and all your pennies like yes you're paying for your wedding but like there's still moments that you can really enjoy before you feel like you've got to knuckle down um and there's a lot of exciting things that will be happening i spoke to this couple the other day we had a meeting about their wedding and um i don't know about you but we did a lot of them lately but they were like so excited because they were just like keen as for what the next year year and a half had ahead of them and it was really refreshing because it was like most people like a low-key anxiety attack freaking out about the whole wedding journey and these guys were like nah like we loved it they were a little bit different they uh booked their so i'm I'm assuming they were like pretty early on in their wedding planning journey no no they booked it get this this is like this is a good story they booked their venue because they really really loved it before he got down to the dirty knee and proposed. Oh, wow. Okay, that's, yeah, definitely against the grain. I don't know too many guys <laughs> so, that are doing that. <laughs> so I was like, is that like, if there's not, if there was not a hint for this guy to uh, propose, I don't know what kind of hint there would have been. Um, but anyway, so they booked their venue uh, and then we had a chat and like, you know, everything was cool. And But they were like genuinely excited about what the next year, year and a half looks for them before their wedding because he was just like, man, there's so many exciting things happening. And I was like, that's so cool to hear. And I don't, yeah. I feel like, Unfortunately, we don't all have that mindset. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Like, look, based on the couples that I've spoken to, like, I think just be aware that leaving it to the last minute, you know, even leaving it to a year in advance is is really kind of pushing it, I feel. Like, it's, Unless you're yeah. super organized. Unless, <laughs> well, yeah. And like, unless you're available. Like, and that's the thing. Like, venues yeah. are booking out like a year and a half in advance. Like, it, it's absolutely mental. Like, those that are like have been engaged the last couple of months, like a booking out 2024 now. Yeah. Oh, you know, absolutely. like, and we're not saying all this stuff to freak you all out. If you haven't booked and you wanted to get married this year, like I'm still booking people that, that are getting married in like August, October this year, for sure. Like, don't get me wrong. And, but they are getting married on dates like a Thursday or a Tuesday can, yeah. or a Sunday, you know, like it's not your Fridays and Saturdays, that's for sure. So look, it's all doable. Um, but yeah, get stuck into it. Enjoy yeah. the process, and that's it. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that's enough about this because we have done a whole episode on. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, look, uh, let's um, but, let's yeah. let, let's move on, right? So, what's what's happening for the year, mate? What's happening for twenty twenty three? Oh, you know, just a few little little things happening on the uh, little things the Man Ashton, Man Ashton side of world of the world over here. We got, uh, as I'm sure you know, some of you may know, and we probably dropped it a couple of times last year in the podcast. But uh, my wife is pregnant, so that's a little bit exciting. She's due Ooh. in like the next couple of months. Uh, yeah, what's, mean, a, what's, a months, like, what's a due date? What's a due date? We're mate? like we're like uh, early March, so that'll be. Fun. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. So, that's not far awesome. at all. 
Yeah, awesome. Now man. we're like six, seven weeks away, so that's pretty cool. Um, so that's exciting. I feel like that's going to take a big chunk of my <laughs> mental space, so to speak, this year. So I guess yeah, look, I can. Life, I can uh, talk from experience at this point. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You'll have to look at life a little bit differently. You know, you're looking after a, a little human. It changes your world. Best thing ever. Yeah. The absolute the best pop. thing in the world. But it does it does change everything, man. It changes your mindset. Like for me, it, it, like, it just changed how I looked at the world. You know, like I've got this tiny little creature that's mine to look after, to feed, to nurture. Um, Hope you and, didn't like, feed it for the first few weeks, but that's okay. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> I did, a, I did a bit of bottle feeding. I did a bit of bottle feeding, mate. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. Bus there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. But no, it's, yeah, it's, it's good, it's, man. It's, it's it's exciting. It's cool. And I'm like, I think that's the thing is like, I'm super pumped for this year. And that's probably a little re- like a little bit more of the reason why I'm not as keen to take as much on as like typically I would. Well, compared to last year anyway. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's happening. Obviously, super excited for the podcast this year. I feel like... Uh, we're a little bit more experienced now. We've got a little bit more, um, I guess, ideas around what we actually want to do rather than when we first started, we were like, we just need to start this thing and let's get it rolling. Um, but the feedback so far has been great and we are really pumped by it. So we're keen to keep this ball rolling, so to speak. And um, yeah, yeah. Make sure we're as long as as long as you guys are getting value from it, we're, we're going to keep on doing this because, yeah, the feedback has been awesome. Like we've, we've been in some situations where, you know, like it's actually helped couples in like certain like aspects within their planning, even on their wedding day. Like, and I don't know that, that just like gets me so excited and pumps me up. That's like, we are doing the right thing um and you know like i love doing this man like i love giving back to the community love giving back to you know couples to make their journey a little bit easier love giving back to like vendors um to share a bit of wisdom on how we've built our business and the things that we do to provide you know a high client experience absolutely i'm super keen for 2023 and the making of the wedding podcast yeah and uh i think this probably is a good little time to drop in uh what is happening with you this year? Because you told me some pretty cool news and you've got some big things in the works coming up this year and you're changing it up, um, which I'm excited about because I reckon um, a lot of people are going to be keen to like hear what you're going to be doing, especially around some ideas on the wedding day itself. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if it's that big. I don't know. You, you really talked that one up. Thank you. <laughs> but, make you know, like... Somehow. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, yeah, well, at least it wasn't a bold comment, so yeah, thanks. That's okay. You got a hat on. Um, your head. Uh, let me take that off. No, that's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, like I think you you get to a stage in your business where like you really want to, you know, like like for me, like it's not good enough just being like comfortable. Like for me, I want to like continue like to step it up and you know continue to provide value and like up that client experience. Um, so. Testing a couple of things out, um, like even like on the wedding day, I've used little things like you know old school camcorders. Um, we had a we had actually had that wedding together where you know the bride actually had like this cool camcorder, user footage, and I'm like, I need that, like <laughs> give me that, let me like let me actually use this, and um, you know like it turned out so so good, and like I bought a couple, um, I now like offer it as a as an add on, um, so we can have like a bit of like a camcorder experience so just say for instance like we're off doing portrait somewhere like oh like throw that bad boy around like give it to some um give it to some of the guests during canapes and like just capture like more moments of the day like in a more authentic manner um you know i'm working things on the like software side in how i deliver films to couples you know like it's i like to you know give you film in like such a like an aesthetically like pleasing way where you can easily download it. It looks nice, um, like as a gallery and, you know, those options aren't necessarily there, like the amount of options for videographers as there is for photographers. Um, so yeah, just looking into kind of like making sure that, that the end experience and the deliveries, um, is right up there. And, you know, I've started doing some more blogs, which is something videographers don't necessarily like do. And, you know, it's, it's just something I feel like could provide value to couples and vendors and, you know, just to like make them more aware of like the work that we are doing. Um, and it really pumps a lot, like I suppose, of traffic to like other vendors as well. Like how do you, how do you go with your blogs? Like are you, I know you're, you've, you've gotten a few out. Um, 
I've read a couple of yours. They're pretty cool. I haven't got as many out as I should have got out last year because I didn't have the time for that. Um, yeah. To be completely I think that, well, that was a big and, issue uh, for a lot, lot of vendors, right? <laughs> yeah. I like I like Typically, I've been pretty good with my blogs in the past, but last year was terrible. Um, I probably got out like a fifth of how many I probably would normally do. And I'm like, oh, this year I'll do it. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll probably use it. But yeah. We'll see how we go. Uh, it's definitely something that I want to work on for sure is the blogging aspect. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like I am pretty happy with like most of my client experience, so to call it at the moment. Um, it's always a work in progress and just doing a few little niggly, uh, changing up things and stuff like that. But I definitely think, um, been on a bit of a winner lately. I've been using uh, Calendly a lot more to like organize like meetings. Oh man, how uh, how much late. time has that saved? Like if you if you're a vendor and uh, what episode was it that we spoke about the you know five tools that every creative business owner should should um, use? I'm looking episode six. There you go. Episode six. Good. There we go. And you know like. How good was it? Like, I, I've saved so much time when, I, as soon as I implement a Calendly. You know, it's just a, a, a simple I'm, I'm, link. I, I'm, I'm loving it at the moment as well because, like, because uh, we are getting slammed, so to speak, in terms of, like, you know, there's been a lot of inquiries. Um, you know, when I do my email replies, like, I drop that link on there so that if you have questions, you can literally click the link and organize to have a meeting with me. And usually, like, I can meet with you guys within the week, sort of thing. Yeah. And we're chatting about your wedding pretty quickly. Like uh, in the last two days, I've done six pre-booking meetings. Um, is what I I've had this crazy. Day, but yeah, six of them in the last two days. So it's been a big couple of days um, chatting to couples, but it's been really exciting and really refreshing. As I said, like I had a few good stories out of it. Had some great chats with people. Um, it's been awesome. And you know, there's a mix of people getting married this year and next year that I've been chatting to. Yeah, yeah, and that's amazing. That is amazing. So, look, a lot of meetings. Like, I, I do, yeah, I do quite a few a week as well. So, yeah, that's saves so much is more time. <laughs> Calendly is the bomb. How um Love how are you going in terms of you know like these like with these meetings and like leads coming in? Like, what's that like? What's that process kind of look like once a like once someone inquires with you? Like, do you uh, like give them a link to book in if they want to book in? Like, do you like typically like follow up with them? Because you know, look, ghosting, ghosting is pretty real. Like in our in our industry, I, I reckon I hear from I don't know maybe less than half of those that inquire. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm the same. Like it's either, especially like considering you know, like for me, it's an inquiry if I'm booked. You know, obviously that's different. I always find that it's quite funny. But I always like, do you find the same? Like you hear back from the people you're booked from saying thanks for the recommendation you've sent, right? Like the amount of people. Like if I'm booked and I go, hey guys, sorry, I'm booked bang, here's a, like an email, here's like some people I recommend, have a chat to them, see if they're available. I would say like 90% of those people would always reply to me saying, oh my goodness, thanks so much for the recommendation. I'm so sad you're booked, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, how does that not happen? Like I, we, I know that all these other people are like, who I'm actually free for are seeing these emails. And like, yes, I chase them up. Uh, you know, I send them an email usually like two days after they book and be like, oh, sorry, two days after they inquire with me. And I'm like, hey, guys, hope you're doing well. I'm dropping a little sneaky hint saying that I do a podcast, uh, jump on and listen to it, you know, give them some value. Uh, and then a couple of days, I don't know, maybe like a week after that second email, I might chase them up again, just being like, hey, what's up? Let's chat. Talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and like, I know this, the, I guess the initial email when you get like my price guide and then on the like, uh, second, third email, third email, you'll probably also get like a, a link on both of them that goes back to Calendly. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to be able to come and have a chat with me and, you know, not ghost me. Um, but look. Yeah. Me look, um, guys, we, we understand. It's a busy season. You're talking to a lot of vendors, a lot of photographers, a lot of videographers, a lot of celebrants. Um, but please remember, we are small businesses. We do, would we would like to hear from you. Being ghosted is not a good experience. It's not fun. Um, no, if you're not interested, just let us know. It's completely fine. Um, but yeah, it kind of is a bit of a you know shitty experience when you know you put a lot of effort and you know like especially when like they write a, like an awesome note and you know they're like oh your work is amazing like if you're, if you're available on my date I would love to book you and then you send them like this you know like this really amazing reply and you can, like pro provide a lot of value. Like I've even got links to the uh, to the podcast you know certain episodes like to help them along the journey. And then it's just crickets, you know, it's like, that's did I do great. something wrong? Did 
did I say something? <laughs> the, amount, the amount of times recently that I've been like, is my like initial email just really, really crap and nobody wants to talk to me? Is like, have I just turned them off because I wrote the wrong thing? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and like, and again, yeah, they send like some epic, you know, some people go to some bloody effort to write like a really good inquiry and I get so excited and then it's just like, you probably spent five minutes writing, like typing out that inquiry or, you know, initially, even if you've copy and pasted it 50 times, uh, you know, but you like initially you spent some time to write and to put some thought into it, but then you can't reply to an email saying, sorry, we've gone elsewhere or not interested, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, look, it's part of the game and, you know, we're like all our vendors are used to it, but I suppose because we started talking about it, we can have a little bitch about it. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's all. I reckon it's probably worse when like, someone is like so interested in like in booking you and then you jump on a call and then they love your stuff and then you hear back, you know, like a couple of days or a week later, oh, sorry, we've booked someone else because they were, you know, different, cheaper, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that <laughs> sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a stitch up. It is what it is. It's, as I said, it's part of the game. We're used to it. Yeah. Um, yep. But, cool, yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, Man, it's it's going to be an immense year. Like again, of, obviously, we want to try and provide as much value as possible. Like we're thinking, we're bringing on some other vendors, some other photographers, some other videographers, and just talk about kind of you know like the value that we can provide. Talk about certain aspects like of how we run our operations on the day. Like I'm super keen to kind of nerd out with some other videographers. Um, you know about all the good stuff, about all the audio. You know how to get the best audio how to get the crisp audio like how we work on the day um yeah tackling some of the big topics man i mean i'm excited it's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome year i'm super keen i'm keen to get some epic vendors on as well that are like you know masters of their craft we've got some people lined up already and yesterday or like earlier this week we dropped some stuff onto our podcast which uh, sorry, onto our podcast Instagram. Uh, and yeah, we were like asking the question of who you guys also want to hear from. Like, we would love to hear from you as well. Like, you know, let us know if there's like specific people. Like I know the other day someone was like, there was a couple of planners that they want to hear from, which like that's definitely a huge topic and we'd love to get a couple of planners on. So that's definitely in the works. Someone also asked about like makeup and like how like the best way to like prepare for your wedding with makeup. And I was like, well, me and Tim don't know that. Uh, so we definitely need some help with, uh, when it comes to that sort of subject. So yeah, there's definitely some people that have been reaching out to us and keen to, um, yeah, I guess we're keen to get them on board and try and have a chat. So yeah, if you're listening and you're like, oh, when it comes to a wedding, what does blah, 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 blah mean? Uh, you know, whatever that is, I don't know. Um, and you know, drop us a message on Instagram. Uh, it's the make it epic dot wedding podcast is our little url uh make sure you chase us up and send us a dm we would love to hear from you uh, but yeah this year is yeah. gonna be sweet all right guys thanks for listening excited to be back and we'll see you in the next one bye